In this class, you're going to be mastering my version of thread painting. This class is perfect for those people who want to practice their free motion sewing techniques. We'll be covering how to use a variety of fibers, ribbons, yarn, and large scale prints to create a cute little wall hanging or even an element for an art to wear garment. This class's kit includes yarn, fibers, ribbons, water soluble stabilizer, and tool netting. So if you're ready to learn and get creative, I look forward to seeing you in class soon. Hi, this is Nick with Dragonfly Creative and welcome to Thread Painting. What we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna take some fabric that has large scale print on it. We're gonna be using a whole bunch of fibers and yarns and then we're going to practice our free motion stitching. So this is a great, great exercise for those of you who want to improve your free motion stitching but don't want to have to worry about ripping things out because maybe you missed a little spot here or glitched a little spot there. So let's just do a brief overview of the supplies that we're going to be using. First of all, I've already cut out a, uh, this was a panel and uh, some of the uh, coordinating fabrics. These, the cat, the four corners, and the dragonfly were all part of the panel. And then the little paws were part of a coordinating fabric that went with the panel. Um, but anyway, so I had this panel and I just cut that out. I cut the cat out, the, the little pieces, the dragonfly and the paws. And as you can see, I left a small border all the way around all of the pieces and that's so that I can stitch into them without necessarily stitching into the main motif. Okay? So that's what these are. Now this paper looking stuff that I have it on is actually water soluble stabilizer. So it looks and it feels like paper. It's going to make moving this stuff under the machine needle much, much easier. And after we're done, it's going to dissolve in water so that we have a transparent or translucent wall hanging. So it's basically creating thread lace, okay? And then underneath of that, I'm gonna move this to the side now because we're not gonna use this quite yet. This is a piece of netting. This is actually a garment type netting, but it works just beautifully. Um, I wanted a slightly darker color because a lot of, there's a lot of color in the motif, and I wanted sort of a mysterious feeling, okay? Um, and there are places where I'll be able to just slit or cut out some of the, the tool, but what the tool is going to be doing is holding down these. On and on we go, and we're just going to continue laying stuff out until we get a fairly heavy amount of fiber in there, okay? And if I want to come back and add more of that later, I can. But for right now, I'm going to move on to something else. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, pull some of this out, and you know, we all bought this because we thought, oh, that is so cool. I can do something with it. And that was probably 10 years ago. And I still have it in my garage. Um, so I am now cutting it up and using it in these wall hangings. And it works out quite nicely. So we've got some fuzz going on here. So there you can see that I've laid out that black and I'm pretty well covered here, okay? So I have some other stuff. I am not required to use all of this, okay? Um, it can be whatever I need it to be. And if I wanted to add a little more later, I could. Um, but for right now, this will be fine. Um, I have it covered pretty much out to the corners. I don't have any glaring holes in here. Um, I can just sort of scooch things around and make sure that everything is covered. 
I am going to take the tool netting and I am going to lay it over the top here, okay? Good. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trim my tool around the edges. I want to leave a little bit um, to wrap around the edge because that's also what's going to give us a solid edge all the way around. So I'm going to wrap that tool around and then when I'm free motioning I'm going to make sure and get that double layer of tool so that will give us a little more solid edge. But for right now I'm just going to go ahead and trim some of this off. So if you take a look at the thread that I'm going to put onto the sewing machine, it's a variegated thread. I have uh, this first one is going to be lots of fuchsias, yellows, a little bit of maroon. I also have a turquoise and gold, and then I have a green and purple, and then I have some more sort of red and yellow. I've just switched these out after a while, so I'll stitch all over with one color, then I'll switch it out and stitch all over with another color. Um, and what that does is it just gives visual interest. Um, but for right now, I'm going to put the, uh, the original uh, fuchsia and yellow and that really bright color on there. And um, that should be able to allow you to see what it is that I'm stitching. So the sewing machine that I'm using today is an HQ Stitch 210. This is a three-quarter size or a half size machine. Um, it weighs virtually nothing, and it's really, really wonderful, easy to use, and believe it or not, does a really, really nice free motion. These, along with the uh, HQ Stitch 510s, are the ones that I use in the retreat center. They're absolutely wonderful machines, and just so you know, Handy Quilter did not give them to me. I'm just doing, I'm giving you a little heads up because I like them. Just as a, a matter of uh, note, um, I, I tend to use Microtech Sharps, um, and I'm going to use a size 80 here because the thread that I have um, it dictates a size 80 is fine. Um, if you want to use a heavier thread, like a, a size 12 thread, a little heavier, um, go ahead and, and bump up to a 90. But I still like the Microtech Sharp because the Microtech Sharp doesn't have any problem going through these yarns. Um, sometimes when you lay down yarns or ribbons or that kind of stuff, a needle that's not quite as sharp will um, have a little bit of an issue. Um, sometimes going through those yarns and I'd rather push the yarn down than go through it. So I've got the Microtech Sharps in there. I have a free motion foot on my machine. I've dropped the feed teeth. In the bobbin is a regular, a regular uh, bobbin full of thread. However, I tend to like to use a bright color on the thread, uh, the bobbin, because it's going to show in the end. So don't just put your, um, you know, the last bobbin you used on your black garment, you know, into the into the thread, unless black is something that you want the thread to to show. I usually like to bring the thread up. I can hold on to the thread, sort of like when you're quilting. It just gives you a little more control, and then I trim the ends when I'm done. Okay. So. I just stick this under here. Now, I'm going to adjust the height of my, my presser foot. I'm raising it a little bit, just so I have a, an easy underneath, because this one is not a hopping foot. Uh, it's, a different, uh, it's a different foot, and so what I do is I pull up my, my thread, and then I go back to where I was, and then I'm going to just start stitching for a moment, and then um, 
I'm going to set it so that it'll stop with the needle in the down position. And then I'm going to trim off these threads. And I know I can hear you saying, why worry about trimming off threads if you've got all this other stuff underneath? And it's like, well, it's a habit. So now what we're gonna do is we're just going to go ahead and stitch all over this. And so if you know you have problem with certain types of stitching, like if you have problems with loops or making round shapes, then practice your loops and your round shapes. So the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be going around the edge so that I can get rid of the clips. Now you'll see that I just did like this really sort of jaggy, weird kind of thing, and that's okay because it doesn't matter. This is a good way to practice your speed control. Okay. And um, figure out what's the most comfortable for you. Okay, now I've got just about as much thread on here as I'm gonna need for the moment. It's pretty much flat now. It's no longer puffy. I changed out a couple pieces of thread and now I've gone back to my original thread and I'm just sort of doing, filling in any visible holes and now we're gonna go ahead and just stop, lift that up, take it out, and we're going to trim off the end. And I will show you what this looks like. Now it's still sort of wonky, and that's okay. It's gonna be like that for a little bit um, until we get it washed out and the water soluble is gone. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay down our fabric motifs. And then we're gonna just stitch those in place and then we're ready to wash her out. Thank you for watching this Dragonfly Creative class. If you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.